Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at graphene battery packs, and we're gonna be ultimately putting these packs to the test and finding out exactly how good they are, or do they suck? Now, this is the thing that we're gonna be taking a look at. All the performance metrics of the battery is gonna be reviewed in terms of the amount of capacity that we can get out of this pack during a loaded test. We're also gonna take a look at the internal results resistance of the battery and put that up against the actual C rating that this battery pack comes with. Now let's take a look at some of the specifications of our battery. We're going to be working with graphene batteries as we mentioned. These are in the configuration of 6S. We're going to take both of these batteries and average the results that we get from each one of the tests that we do per battery pack. They're 4000 milliamp hour in capacity and they have 45C discharge rates. Now simply put, if we take a 45C discharge rate and we multiply that by our four amp hour, our 4,000 milliamp hour, we should get a battery pack that can dissipate 180 amps continuous from this battery pack. And I can already tell you, and you probably already know this, it's not gonna do 180 amps. Let's see how it handles the 100 to 105 amp load test here in the video today. And what we're gonna take a look at here at the very end of this video is what is the resting voltage of a battery pack? We'll talk more about that when we get to it, but for now, let's jump into the internal resistance test and throw these packs on the charger and get the results. Let's go to the charge mode app within our charger so that we can initiate the charge. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get to six amps as our charge rate. We get this by using a consistent, through every single one of these tests we do, 1.5 C charge rate. We multiply that by four amp hour and this is how we get these six amps. Now we're gonna accelerate through each one of these windows so that we can initiate the charge. We could have let all of those windows just expire and then it automatically moves into the next sequence there. However, we accelerated that and now we're accelerating the time that we're taking to get to the one minute mark. At one minute, this specific charger takes the internal resistance readings, and that's the time that I would suggest for you to take these readings as well, when you're charging for only one minute. If you go beyond that, then you get values that are not as consistent. So there we saw values of anywhere from 2.3, 2.4, all the way to 3.4 milliamps. Quite the variation on that very first pack. Now we're doing the exact same thing here on the second pack, we're accelerating the video to the one minute mark and we got our readings. They already look a little bit better. Anything from 2.1 to 3.5 milliohms for this battery. Here's the RC Explain Patreon RC Calc Sheet. Now this is the one that we're gonna be using to take those IR values, drop it into the spreadsheet in order to calculate the real LiPo C rating. Now if you wanna download a copy of this spreadsheet, you can do so by becoming a member on the RC Explain Patreon website. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below and then you will be able to have the chance to download a copy that includes all the tabs that you can find on this spreadsheet. Let's now jump over over to the real LiPo C rating calculator and start manipulating these values so that we can actually get the results that we're after. So the capacity of the pack, the last one that we did was a 6,000 which had an average cell internal resistance of 2.5 milliohms. Today in our test, we had a 4,000 milliohm battery pack and the average resistance, if you take all 12 cells that we measured here today, was 2.71. So the battery pack's calculated real C rating now is displayed and it comes out at 24 C, which gives us a maximum continuous current of 96 amps. That's simply just taking the newly calculated 24 C and multiplying it by four. Even at the 96 amp continuous discharge rate that this calculator is calculating, I don't believe that's conservative enough. If we did 96 amps, I think the battery pack would still overheat and we would not get to that voltage cutoff that is programmed within the load cell. Now because of this, sometime in the future I am going to change the formulas across the entire battery test range that we've tested thus far. That means all the previous videos that you've seen with this value is going to be different sometime in the future. So stay tuned for when we do that. It won't be this month but it could be sometime within the next couple months. Well guys, now we know the actual performance of these batteries batteries as it relates to the C rating 
of the pack. And just like we predicted, 180 amps for this battery is definitely not going to be within the realm of what this battery pack can handle. In fact, it's a lot different than that mark. Let's now jump into the test where we test the performance of the battery. All I do is place this on a load cell, which essentially pulls 105 amps from the battery. Good performing battery packs will pull more power and weaker battery packs will pull less power than that actual amount. And we're going to record the metric that we're able to grab from the battery and see exactly how it compares and stacks up against another 4,000 milliamp hour battery pack from the graphene line as well. Let's take a look at how it does. We're done the load test and here is the results of that test. Now we have a few different results up on the screen. We have the 6S45C4000 that we here measured today. And then we have the 4S4000 that we measured here several weeks ago. And then we got the 40C4000 Liperior that we measured even more weeks ago. And we got all the results here that we're gonna be taking a look at. So one of the most important parts that I see right away is that we have a significant difference as it relates to the total milliamp hour that we depleted from our graphene 4006S versus the 4004S. Now the primary reason for this is because both of these previous batteries, I think even the Liperior 2, I didn't stop the test quick enough and the battery actually got quite hot. At 3000 milliamp hour, I did blow past the 60C, but it didn't blow past it until a few seconds after I stopped the test. Then it went up above that 60C mark. Now when it comes to the milliamp hour of all of these and the time, we got a much better result with our Graphene 6S than even the graphene 4s now if you do look at the milliamp hour to 3.5 it's very very small on the 4s pack that we tested weeks ago versus the one that we just did here today at 2462 now there's a big reason as to why we got this and it's probably to deal with or do with the internal resistance that we're seeing between these packs 4.7 versus 2.7 is essentially double the internal resistance meaning that we're going to get less performance and our graphene pack did really well this week as it relates to that test and our Liperior actually didn't do as well as it did for our graphene so very interesting to note the differences there now when we look at the voltage at the 10 second mark this again tells us a story the graphene was at 3.65 volts which held up pretty good in terms of the average voltage that we're seeing at that 10 second mark compared with the 4s at 3.52 which is rather weak and then the Liperior at 3.58 so very interesting to see these types of results and then when we look at the energy per cell this relates the amount of total capacity that we drew so not super critical this battery ended up getting 656 versus the other 4s pack that we did got 708 but that's because again the 6s was cut at the more appropriate time and the 4s actually got further heat damaged than i it should have been because i didn't stop the test in time so those are the results that we got and then you can see the average cell wattage is the highest for our 6s graphene so when it comes to does this battery actually you know is it good or does it suck this battery actually performs decently it's going to work very well in some higher demand applications that are pulling around the 100 amp mark and it'll be able to do a good job. So this is going to be one of my EDF battery packs and I expect that it's going to perform quite well when I'm using the 6S packs. And as you see here and we talked about this battery pack did fail the 105 amp load test. I think it averaged somewhere around 103 to 104 amps during this load test which is decent. A better performing battery pack would be closer to the 105 amp and a really good performing battery pack would be well above the 105 amp mark when it comes to the test that we do here. Very interesting to see the performance metrics on the tests that we've done with both of these batteries here today. Now earlier in the video I did talk about the resting voltage and I wanted to get into that here in this video because it is something that I take a look at with all these battery performance data tests that we do here on the channel. Now this battery pack, because the test actually did fail and we did hit 60 degrees Celsius, that does mean we didn't pull all the power that this battery pack has within it out of the battery. So we 
we have some capacity still remaining in the battery. And ultimately, when it comes to looking at the resting voltage, a weaker performing battery will have a higher resting voltage. And this is because we have, you know, some gas left in the tank, so to speak. The results that we got here, I'll throw some images here up on the screen. We got anywhere from 3.75 volts resting voltage all the way to 3.79 volts in terms of resting voltage. So both of these values are not so great when it comes to the actual resting voltage of the battery pack. And that is just exactly as we described because we're not able to extract all the power within this battery pack. Thus, we can't actually fully deplete the battery. We'll see exactly how this resting voltage compares up against batteries that we're gonna test here on the channel sometime in the future. I hope you learned something about the graphene battery packs that are sold by Hobby King. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.